like heat streams in the desert. But it is a good time to replace the water bottle. <laughs> it's a good time to sit, take a look around, and see what it is that God would speak to us. Pollen. <laughs> But the reality is, is that God is always at work in all around us, causing life to spring forth. It doesn't operate in a vacuum without the presence of God in some way touching it and causing it to grow. We like to think that we understand it by science, but science simply describes God. Science doesn't... <laughs> inform us of something new outside of God but the reality is it's more like a you have a noun and an adjective describes the noun but the noun is still the noun that's the way it is with God and science science God is here but science just kind of covers and tries to figure out and understand God and at one time it was taken for granted that that was what it was supposed to do and so throughout history you've seen this at times conflict where sometimes religion would throw down science and then sometimes science would throw down religion and then sometimes you get where there's a happy balance and then sometimes you get where science is actually enhancing religion well relationship is meant to be something that incorporates science and religion so that there's a happy blend of the two that is founded upon the word of god so you can have an intellect you can have intelligence you can have intelligent faith you can have scientific faith but you have to have a relationship with God in order to have that in proper balance because God is the one who created us and gave us this ability to have science in the first place, to think. You think the great thinker couldn't outthink us with what he was thinking before he ever had us to be able ability to think and that we think we can come up with something that he hasn't thought of? <laughs> no, I don't think so. So let's get together with the Lord and see what he would share with us. Because he's always outthought me and outthunk me and is something that I want to know more of his thoughts and not my thoughts. I'd rather have his ways than my ways. I will allure her and bring her into the wilderness, and I will give her her vineyards from thence. Hosea 2:14 and 15. A strange place to find vineyards in the wilderness. And can it be that the riches which a soul needs can be obtained in the wilderness, which stands for a lonely place out of which you can seldom find your way? It would seem so. And not only that, but the valley of Achor, Achor, which means bitterness, is called a door of hope. And she shall sing there as in the days of her youth. Yes, God knows our need in the wilderness experience. He knows where and how to bring out that which is enduring. The soul has been idolatrous, rebellious, has forgotten God, and with a perfect self-will has said, I will follow after my lovers. But she did not overtake them. She pursued them but never caught them. And when she was hopeless and forsaken, God said, I will allure her and bring her into the wilderness and speak comfortably unto her. What a loving God that is. What a God is ours. We never know where God hides his pools of blessing. We see a rock, we cannot guess it is the home of a spring. We see a flinty place and we cannot tell it is the hiding place of a fountain. God leads me into the hard places and then I find I have gone into the dwelling places of eternal springs. You know, it's funny, speaking of hidden blessings in the midst of where you wouldn't think of it, you know, in my life today, you know, I, I give thanks to God for something that, I want it, and I've been, my wife and I like to go out into the community, and we go to these used stores, you know, and we always, like Salvation Army and veterans and that kind of stuff, and I don't like to buy new because I always figured that I would rather turn the money into something that could be used for some other purpose, either pay bills or use for God or something, than to possibly, you know, waste it on myself, you know, getting something that 
You look at it and you go, oh, I got a brand new shirt. Oh, and it cost me $50 or $100, you know, and wow, it's so cool, you know, and uh, I'm so sexy in it and I look so sharp and I am so Mr. With It, you know. And the reality is, is that the guy down the street goes into the used store and picks up, hey, check it out, man, I got this $50 shirt, you know, that's so cool and so sexy and it looks so silky and it only cost me a buck. <laughs> Gee, I wonder who is in control of the circumstances of her life. That, to me, is a blessing. That's why I go out and I enjoy what God has given me, because it didn't cost me anything. <laughs> He's provided it all. It always costs nothing, because I owe everybody everything for all that I am, and my faith, and my life, and my relationships. But one thing that happened today was that I have had these old beat up tennis shoes and it was like man they've been around forever and my wife kept telling me to throw them away and I wouldn't because they're Reeboks and they're leather and they haven't worn out but they have this cushion keeps my feet comfortable you know forever you know and I go lots of walking and lots of different things you know and they're over 10 years old you know I mean they're pretty pretty they're still together you know they haven't worn out and the amazing thing is, is I went to a used store today and found a brand new pair. I'd been thinking about it for a couple days now and talking to the Lord about, you know, you know, and told my wife, I said, we, we need to go out and I need to get maybe a few shirts, you know, and maybe some tennis shoes because these are looking pretty sad, you know. And if it isn't just like my God who loves me, he brought me to the right used store and there they were just sitting there. I looked at them, I went, Looked down at my shoes, all brown and black and worn out and ter terrible looking. I looked at them and thought, you got to be kidding me. <laughs> sure enough, they were the same pair. Just unbelievable. Exactly the same. And six bucks. I was blessed. Me and God, man, we make an unbeatable team. Give me a high five, God. You know, and that's the way that my God is personal, real, exists in my practical world. So when somebody tells you you can't be practical, you know, about spiritual things, take science and see what the astronomical predictions would be for the coincidental conflux of the circumstances of a person's life purchasing a pair of shoes and having them 10 years later wind up at the place of need at the time that the person is thinking about it with God talking to him about it and then finding them in a place far removed from where he was when he bought his first pair of shoes, which I believe was in either Alaska or Canada, and then to find one in California in a used store. That is what science is for. Science will help you determine that the mathematical equations of that are unbelievable. But guess what? With God, it's a common occurrence. You just got to believe him. And the truth is, you don't even have to believe him. You just have to trust him. And I do for everything in my life. How about you?